What's up, nerds? So, Kim Joy's Magic Bakery is a co-op game about baking stuff. I think it's Kim. I think Kim Joy is a. It's a real person, right? It's, it's light co-op game, pretty straightforward. Whoa, 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 whoa! We got to focus on the apron. Well, <laughs> game. <laughs> is, look, lean back, lean back. See that little thing? This game comes with the. It doesn't come with the apron. I don't think, but it was no. shipped to us with the apron. In this box, we got that. We also got. Hang on, let me see. Boxes yeah. are hard. So we got the we got the game, we got the apron, we also got So this really is a very basic co-op game where you get resources and then trade the basic resources and for more complicated resources mm -hmm. and use the more complicated resources and the basic resources to complete missions. Um and that's the whole game. On your turn, you'll draw some cards, you'll swap some cards, you'll trade cards out for these, and then hopefully get the right the right collection of things to complete a mission. Before it, you know, every turn these move down and they'll go off the edge of the board. Where's That's, the thing that tells you what you do on your turn? The the tracker, the round, the card thing, the card yeah. thing, the the thing for the thing. So yeah, you only have a couple actions per turn, two or three, based on player count, and they're really straightforward. It's just like pick up um, a, a resource, trade in a resource for a better resource, or trade in all of the resources you need to complete the the mission things, the cust customers. Uh, but also in there is pass a card to another player, which is something when we were playing recently, I totally, I like forgot we were doing. But I'm no, certain I mean, there are game. some games where you definitely like, like I've I played this a few times now. It, it's definitely a thing that helps. And now you're not supposed to ever say like what you have, um, but you can say things like, "Man, I'd really like to get a biscuit, but I only have I only don't have any eggs." Well, even that, I think, it would probably be too specific, maybe. But it's just like, you know, hey, listen, I think, I feel like I could take care of this customer. I'll handle that customer. And, and you could vary that based on, like, what group you're playing with. Yeah, table know? talk in co-op games is always, like, up to you. Yeah. You know? How unless hard do you want it to be? Unless it's Hanabi. Like, but you're, spe like, whenever they're talking about table talk, I'm always like, I'm okay with this kind of table talk. I'm not okay with that kind of table talk, you know? Um, so this is, since it's a very straightforward, it's just... Gather resources, spend them on cards, right? Mm -hmm. Gather resources, spend them for points, essentially. Um, but the thing that makes this unique is that you actually have a bunch of little... Well, okay. <laughs> unique the is thing, a strong word. The thing that makes it ever so slightly more than what I said earlier, right? It's mm -hmm. more than just gather resources, spend them on points, customers, whatever, is that there are, like, scenarios that, while they're not super different, they do change the add a couple little twists and turns into the game... That are kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is, like, different challenges to face. Like, one of them has, like, a fat cat that lays on some of your stuff, and you have to, like, spend actions to move the cat in order to get to certain um, layers to buy. There's one where, like, the fox, like, steals all the eggs, and so you have to go trade two identical resources to the fox to get the eggs. Yeah, this one here is at the end of each round, each player chooses two cards in their hand to keep and passes the rest to the player on their left. There's one of them that, like... Every time you draw the basic resources, you never put them into your hand. You always put them into somebody else's hand. Like, that one, like they definitely vary in difficulty to, you know, depending on who you're playing with and how challenging you want to make it. Oh, my God. This one says, stop, don't shuffle these cards. Only reveal the next card when you're ready to play the next piece of the story. So it's supposed to be like a campaign-y type thing? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just like, yeah, you play different scenarios. And the answer is yes, it is that. It is that, okay? Anytime, nowadays, really, when it says, oh, it's a campaign game or there's a story or there's a, something of this nature, I'm always like, no, it isn't. Most Especially, of the time it isn't. It doesn't build. Like, the only way to do a campaign, a campaign like that is if you unlock things that you will use in subsequent missions. Like, oh, right. this mission, we, like, and when we used to play like, Imperial Assault, and the campaign's like, okay, you go here to get this player's lightsaber. Yeah, and now yeah. they have a lightsaber for future games. <laughs> that is a campaign. Not just, like, today we have a panda in the shop, how does that change our panda. day? Yeah, no, no. I mean, look, you can play it that way if you want to, that's fine. Just for me, when I hear that, I, go, I roll my eyes, go, ugh, okay. But like, it is cool that they add these different little twists, and that's what it is. A little twist. Pandemonium. Special conditions. Set a 10-minute timer at the start of this round. This scenario ends either when the customers in the row are gone or when the timer runs out. 
Okay, that's cool. A couple cool little different things. I like it. I overall like this game. I don't love it. It is very simple. It's fine. It's super intro. Uh, new players, we played it, or I didn't play it. You played it with our brother and sister-in-law. My sister. My and, sister-in-law. Right. And it is both husband. of our brother-in-law. Yeah, and then our, both of our brother-in-laws, right? Um, so... Where was I going? Yeah, no, no, he really liked it. Both of them really liked it. And they were like, yeah, it was really cool. It's like co-op because he loves co-op games, you know. And we couldn't talk too much, but like we, we had to make this to make that to make this. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm glad you like that, you know. So so playing with them, and maybe they, they had a better experience later. Everyone I've played this with has ended with like, yeah, it was fine. I don't need yeah. to play it again. Like, it's it's so simple. And I think, I mean... Looking at the artwork and the theme, it's geared towards younger kids. Yeah, it's it. Um, and it's a great intro to co-op games. Learning like, okay, get these to get these to get that. I think it's a great stepping stone and like a like before intro game, like an intro to intro game. Um, sure. It's to me, it was better than I thought. Yeah. Like when I looked at this box and I was like, okay, I'll I'll play that. And I played it and I was like, oh. I'm surprised at how much I enjoyed that. Yeah. Which was a little. It was fine to good. Yeah. Um, but if you have young children, especially if they're like super into baking and that's like a theme that's going to excite them, it'd be a fun game to play with them and like introduce them to some mechanics of gaming. Yeah. Um, if you are two 30-year-old men, I'm probably not going to recommend it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you guys should get jobs. <laughs> So yeah, kind of a lukewarmish reception from us. Whatever, there's links down there. There's Game Topper links down there. That one's hella dope. There's also a button that says subscribe. You know what to do. This one has like almost no chocolate chips. They're all on this side. Sucks to suck.